Everyone, Jeff, your executive gardener. Happy New Year to all of you. I haven't spoken to you probably in a while. So I thought I'd share something with you uh, that, quite frankly, is unusual, which is sun. We've got a lot of sun here in Houston, Texas. 78 degrees on January 13th. Beautiful sunny day. I'm just kidding. It's not 78 degrees. It's about 55 to 60 degrees. Nonetheless, really nice. Anyway, I'm going to be behind the camera today. I'll give you an update on some of the things I'm growing. Then I'll show you inside what's exactly going on. I'm going to use my cell phone camera today and stay behind the camera. I just want to remind all of you, tonight is a big game. The Philadelphia Eagles do play the New Orleans Saints. If you're a Saints fan, I'm sorry about that. Anyway, no, they have a good team, but most of you know I'm a Philly fan. Let's start with the green stalk garden. All right, so here's an update with the green stalk garden doing great. So I'm going to be doing a series probably in about two to four weeks. I'm going to be giving away a free green stalk garden. Okay, so I don't get paid by these guys or anything, but this is just phenomenal. Let me show you an update on how things are doing on the green stalk garden. The herbs are doing great. Now, these usually, as you know, stack on top of each other. I just have them spread out like this. But take a look. Spinach. Boom. Look how nice that is. Herbs. Okay? Real simple to use. More herbs. More spinach. Look at that lettuce. Okay? Black Simpson lettuce. Look how bold that is, man. And remember, there's... there's uh, a bunch of different containers on each so uh, but look how green plentiful that is okay now you're in charge of your own nutrients because each of these have soil but it's beautiful let's take a look at there's some bad leaves right there but for the most part uh, this is um, romaine lettuce again beautiful remember we had a shortage on romaine this year I think there was some uh, uh, E. coli or some type of bacteria and it was recalled. We don't have to worry about that. You know, the great thing about this green stalk, I just wanted to say too, is very few weeds. Uh, it's convenient, easy to water. And other than snails in Houston, we really don't have many issues. You'll see there's a few uh, snail holes there. Okay. Other than that, we don't have any other issues. Okay. There's some little oranges. Anyway, there's another one right there. Parsley spinach. So uh, what I want to show you today is now that we have some sun, the broccoli is starting to do really well. So let's take a look at some of the broccoli here. Heads are getting bigger. The plants are getting bolder. It's amazing. Nothing will grow without sun. Okay. Pretty novel idea. Look at the size of that head. Okay. It's my hand here. Got a fairly decent sized hand. That's a gigantic broccoli head here. More broccoli. Cauliflower. The cauliflower is starting to bloom with some sun. More spinach. Now this is broccolini. Uh, really good to grow. You can grow this in the green stalk garden because it doesn't get as big as that gigantic head of broccoli. More broccolini. Broccolini. Uh, and so forth. And then I'm starting to grow some um, radishes. So these are, I think, French breakfast radishes and some radishes over there as well. Um, behind the broccolini. Uh, these are great for kids to grow. If you have kids that want to, uh, don't have the patience like much of us adults to grow um, things, you know, uh, radishes take 30 to 40 days from seed to complete. And uh, it's just awesome. So it's a great thing for kids to do if they want to get into gardening. Lastly, let me show you, uh, I did plant some broccoli in a, uh, a pot. Okay, and that did very well too. You'll see there. Now I'm going to cut this head off today because it looks like it's starting to flower a little bit. But uh, as you know, when you cut the main head off of the broccoli, other other uh, broccoli sprouts will come down the stem. Once you cut that off, all the energy goes to those other shoots that come out. So that's kind of what's going on. My side garden's doing okay. I'm going to save some time, not show you. I have cauliflower. My Brussels sprouts, you'll see there. More Brussels sprouts. Uh, a little bit stunted with a lack of sun this year, but we don't have to worry about it now. Look at all that sun, folks. That's exactly what we need here in Houston, Texas. Just more of it, okay? Uh, let me show you what the inside plants look like. My pepper plants, 
tomato plants in the Arrow Garden. And so before I go inside, I want to share with you, uh, if you do not have a Meyer lemon tree, um, you got to get one if you're in Houston, Texas. So this thing, you know, we didn't get frost yet. We'll cover it if it does, but this little tree has been in this little pot. We replenish the soil, nutrients, fertilizer every year. And um, it just puts out like 50 lemons. And these lemons are five times better than the lemons that you'll see on uh, at the store in the grocery store they just kick it man they're incredible get a Meyer lemon Meyer lime tree now you have to trim it a little bit but this whole thing side, uh, side to side is about four or five feet it's only about three two three feet high you can fit this in your condo or your apartment what I would suggest that you do for fertilizer is once a year in the winter use this stuff Osmocote it's a smart release plant food and uh, when it rains the nutrients go right into it and prepare it for the next season now I'm gonna have to start I'm gonna have to get these lemons off here soon so the energy goes to the plant to produce flowers and buds but man if you're in the south get yourself Meyer lemon or Meyer lime they're delicious extremely juicy easy to care for uh, let's get inside and show you what's going on inside all right, so here we go. Let's take a look at what's going on inside here. These are the uh, order kitchen starters. Um, so as you'll see here, these are the uh, pepper seedlings. So in the first row, I've got Jimmy Nardello. In that middle row, I've got Shishido. In the last row, I have Jimmy Nardello again. I think I had about 65% to 70% germination rate. Each of these cells that you see here, what I did was I eliminated the weakest pepper plant. And in each cell, I kept the strongest pepper plant. Um, and uh, I'll keep it under the light. Look at my last video with the heat mat, the inside lamp, and see it. But you see they're doing very well. Uh, no problems whatsoever. I've already thinned them out. Again, it's really important if you live in the south uh, near Houston or Orlando, your pepper seeds probably should be started a week or two ago because you want to get them out in March. They take a long time to germinate, and I'm going to prove that point in just a second. And then once they get outside and you retransplant them, it takes 60 to 100 days to get peppers, whether they're sweet peppers or hot peppers. So take your time. They do take a while. Let's take a look over here, and I'll prove my point. Over here, what you'll see here is in the back, I've got mohawk peppers, I've got red skin peppers, cumanelle peppers, okay? And in the front, I've got tomatoes. The tomatoes have already started to sprout, and the seedlings are well underway. The peppers haven't even broke the uh, so the uh, potting mix yet. Not the potting mix, excuse me. The seedling seed starter mix, okay? Um, so they take a while. Again, make sure you use a heat map. You're going to need that. Keep the lamp about two to four inches above the top of the plants, and then you're in good shape. Uh, there's two plants, two uh, peppers I'm growing. If you live in a apartment or in a condo or don't have much space, go with the mohawk pepper and the red skin pepper. Those, both those peppers are sweet peppers. <clears throat> they stay compact on a plant that gets to be about 18 inches tall and produce a tremendous amount of peppers depending on the nutrients that you do use. I'd highly encourage you to do that. You see I've got some cubanelle, which are a bigger plant. And then tomatoes, I'm going to do some dwarf tomatoes this year in the green stalk garden. I've got some F1 patio started. I've got some Alka uh, uh, dwarf uh, started and some new big dwarf. I'm going to focus on the dwarf tomato plants this year. So everything's going well here. And then let's take a look at the arrow garden. Look at this lettuce. The black Simpson lettuce, which is right here, has started to take off and doing very well. In addition, the romaine lettuce is doing very well. Look how vibrant. It is. I planted this probably a week and a half before this, so that's why it is. What you'll see there is when I cut the seedlings in half, excuse me, I, I um, remove some of the seedlings from the uh, this one over here, okay? Uh, I took one of this and I, I put this in uh, the plug, which looks like such, okay, for the arrow garden. And I want to see if I can... Um, uh, get that to grow once I cut it off from the stem. I don't know what's going to happen there and whether that clone will grow or not, but yesterday it was completely drooped. 
Now it's partially drooped. We'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, I've got this Aero Garden again. They don't pay me to do anything. I think I'm going to get another one, but it's great. If you live in the South where you can't grow lettuce most of the year because it's too hot and it'll bolt, it's a great way to uh, accomplish that. Anyway, that's my update. Everything inside is growing well. The seedlings are growing well. My broccoli is growing well. Uh, everything outside is growing pretty well. And more importantly, we have sun again. So um, that's all I have. Happy New Year to all my followers, my subscribers. Pass it on to a friend if you have a friend that's interested in gardening. Again, stay tuned in a few weeks. I'm going to give away a green stalk garden to anybody who watches um, uh, the video and leaves some comments. I'll put the rules out there later. Until next time, Jeff, your executive gardener. Bye.